Hi class, in this lecture I want to do a introduction to what we call ex exponential and logarithmic functions. Now this, uh, this lecture here is going to be a little bit on the longer side as I want to cover all these topics at once. I'm going to do a real brief introduction to everything, um, but hopefully it gets you started on this module. Okay, so first, what are exponential functions? So here we study a new class of functions called exponential functions. So for example, something like this, f of x is equal two to the x, is what we call an exponential function with base two. So notice how the variable is the exponent here. That's important, that's how it tells you an exponential function. So notice how quickly the values of this function increase. Like f, f of three is two cubed is, is eight, but f of 10, okay? 2 to the 10th power is 1,024. All right, f of the 30, 2 to the 30th power is that. Okay, compare this with the function g of x is equal to x squared, where you flip the variable and the value. g to the 30 is 900. The point is that when the variable is an exponent, even a small change in the variable can cause a drastic change in the value of the function. All right, so now let's talk about exponential functions in a little bit more detail. Okay, it can be proved that that the law of exponents are still true when the exponents are real numbers. So we define the exponential function with base a is defined for all real numbers x by the following. f of x is equal a to the x. Here a is greater than 0, but not equal to 1. Okay. We assume that a is not equal to 1 because the function f of x 1 to the x is just a constant function. It's always equal to 1. All right, here are some examples of exponential functions. This is 2 to the x, that's base 2. 3 to the x is base 3. 10 to the x is base 10. All right, how do we graph these functions? All right, so we first graph f exponential functions by plotting points. So we will see that the graphs of such functions have an easily recognizable shape. So let's graph these right here. f of x is equal to 3x, and g of x is equal to 1 third x. So plotting, what you would do here to graph these is you would just pick some points or pick some values of x. And you'd plug them into both graphs, right? So like if you plug negative 3 into this, you get 3 raised to the negative 3 power, which is 1 over 27. Here it flips it. And what you'll see here in red, this is what the graph of y is equal to 3x looks like. This is what the graph of y is equal to 1 third x looks like. Notice that as is, it looks like it, both of these graphs at some point increase without bound, and then there's a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis here. Okay, that's really important. So it, all, all these graphs are going to have this type of shape, okay, if this number is greater than 1, and this type of shape if the number is less than 1. All right, the base. All right, so notice that this graph here, all right, you could simplify to be the following, okay, just plugging in negative 1. So you could, negative x, I mean, we could have obtained the graph of g from the graph of f by reflecting it in the y-axis. That's why these graphs here are reflections of each other. Okay, so this figure here shows the graphs of a family of exponential functions. Um, f of x is equal to a to the x for various values of base a, right? So you can look here as the base goes from 2 to 3 to 5 to 10, the graphs just move in and blow up quicker, get, get higher quicker. Same thing on this side. Here's 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth, 1 tenth. They just get, they get larger, quicker as this value is closer to 0. All right, all of these graphs, no matter what, pass through the point 0, comma 1. That's because a to the 0 is 1. Okay, so that you can see from figure 2, there are two kinds of exponential functions. As I was kind of hinting at, if a is between 0 and 1, the exponential function decreases rapidly. If a is greater than 1, the function increases rapidly. All right, the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote of the exponential function, okay? And this is because when a is greater than 1, we have a to the x goes to 0 as x goes to negative infinity. And when a is somewhere between 0 and 1, uh, a to the x goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So the horizontal axis for these simple ones initially, okay, important, are always the x-axis. All right, also, a to the x greater than 0 for all x in the real numbers. So this function, a to the x, has a domain of all real numbers.
okay? So a to the x is greater than zero, excuse me, for x for all real numbers. So the domain is you can all real numbers, but the range is zero to infinity, okay? That's really, really important, okay? You can plug anything into this, but as this function, just when it looks like a to the x, just when it looks like a to the x, has a range of zero to infinity. Okay, let's talk now about something called the natural exponential function. And we're going to need to define something called the number e. So the number e is defined as the value that uh, this, this expression, 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n, approaches as n becomes large. In calculus, you'll learn about this when you move into Calc 1. This idea is called a limit. But the table shows the values of this expression for increasing large values of n. So it looks like as n increases, this value is converging to some number like 2.71 something. Okay, so it appears that rounded to five decimal places, e is equal to 2.71828. In fact, the approximate value to 20 decimal places is shown here. So it can be shown that e is an irrational number, so we cannot write its exact value in decimal form. Okay. All right, so the natural exponential function now. The natural exponential function is the exponential function f of x is equal e to the x. So this here, the base is e. So it is often referred to as the exponential function. All right, so since uh, e is somewhere between 2 and 3, the graph of the exponential function lies between the graphs of y is equal 2 to the x and y is equal 3 to the x, as you see in this figure. So scientific calculators have often, if you check your calculator, have a special key all right, for the function e to the x. And we'll use that in a little bit in the coming weeks and coming lectures. Okay, like if I want to evaluate these examples, how would we do it? All right, the first one here. We use this e to the x calculator, and e to the 3 ends up being this button. 2 e to the negative 0 0.53, when you plug it in your calculator, ends up being this. And e to the 4.8 ends up being this value. I encourage you if, you, if you've never used this button on your calculator before, to, to verify these. Okay. Kind of have an idea real quick about exponential functions. Let's talk now about logarithmic functions. Okay, what are logarithmic functions? Well, every exponential function here, f of x is equal to a to the x, is one to one, okay, because it passes the horizontal line test. Since it's one to one, it has an inverse function. So what is the inverse function to exponential functions? Okay, the inverse function is called the logarithmic function with base a, okay? And it's denoted log with a base a. And we know that f inverse is defined by the following. f inverse of x is equal to y, and f of y is equal to x. Okay, so this leads to the following definition of logarithmic functions. Let's let a be a positive number and a is not equal to one. The logarithmic function with base a, denoted log a, is defined as the following log base a of x is equal to y. Similarly, okay, if and only if a raised to the y is equal to x. Okay, so log base a of x is the exponent to which the base a must be raised to give x. Okay, so the log, the log finds the exponent of base a to get this x value. All right, we use this definition of logs to switch back and forth between logarithmic form, log base a of x is equal to y, and the exponential form a to the y is equal to x. It's helpful to notice that in both forms, the base is the same, okay? So if you look in log form, you see log base a, you look in exponential form, you see exponential base a. All right, so the logarithmic and exponential forms are equivalent equations. If one is true, then so is the other, that's important. So we can switch from one form to the other as in the following illustrations, okay? Log base 10 of 100,000 is equal to 5. The equivalent statement is 10 to the fifth power is 100,000, and so on. So log base 5 of s is equal to r. That means 5 to the r is equal to s. So this is how these, these forms are um, equivalent to each other. All right, how do we graph these functions? Okay, so we know that if a one-to-one -one function f has domain A and range B, 
then its inverse function has domain b in range a. All right, so since the exponential function f of x is equal a to the x has domain r in range 0 to infinity, we conclude that the inverse function has domain 0 to infinity, and the range is all real numbers. So the, what I'm saying here is the graph of this log base a of x is obtained by reflecting the graph of f of x, which is equal to a to the x, along the line y is equal to x. So here is the case where we have y is equal to a to the x. All right, This is what y is equal to log base a of x looks like. Okay, so it's the inverse. So notice that this one has a horizontal asymptote, whereas this one here has a vertical asymptote. So the fact that y is equal to a to the x is a very rapidly increasing function for x is greater than 0 implies that y is equal to log base a of x is a very slowly increasing function for x greater than 1. All right, notice that since log base a of 1 is equal to 0, the x-intercept of the function y is equal to log base a of x is 1. So the y-axis, as I said, is the vertical asymptote of this because log base a of x goes to negative infinity as x goes to 0 from above. All right, so let's just do one example. Let's sketch the graph of this, okay? Uh, f of x is equal to log base 2 of x. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to make a table of values here, okay? Choose x values to be power 2, so that's the base, right? So that we can easily find their logarithms. Okay, so if we have 2 raised to the third, okay, so I'm plugging in um, uh, 3 here, okay, um, the log base 2 of x is 3, and you can see what's going on. When x is equal to 1, log is 0, and so on. So when you, ske when you sketch these, when you plot these points, you get this nice smooth curve that looks like this. Okay, so here 2 to the 2 to the 3 is 8. Okay, so what we're doing is we're plugging in 8 and we're seeing that that exponent is 3. So on. That's what we're doing. All right, figure 4 here shows the graph of a family of log functions of different bases just so you can see how they rise. The lower the base, the the quicker it shoots up. All right, let's talk about the natural log now. Of all possible bases A for logarithm, it turns out that the most convenient choice for purposes of calculus is the number E. So the logarithm of base E is what we call the natural log, and it gets a special, donate, a special designation. It's just ln of x, and that's just log base E of x. So the natural logarithmic function y is equal to the natural log of x is the inverse function of the natural exponential function y is equal to e to the x. All right, and both functions here you can see are, are they're graphs of each other, and they're just reflections along that want line y is equal to x. All right, if we substitute a equal e and write ln for log e in the properties of logarithms mentioned earlier, we obtain the following properties of natural logs always, okay? Natural log of 1 is equal to 0. Natural log of e is equal to 1. Natural log of e to the x is just equal to x. And e raised to the natural log of x is equal to x. These, I can't stress, are incredibly important properties. Okay? They also hold, this is important, um, no matter what the base is. Okay? So if this was log base a of 1, that's equal to 0. If this was log base 5 of 5, that's 1. All right? If this was log base 5 of 5 to the x, that's x. Okay, so that's important to note. All right, so we're going to now talk about laws of logs. Okay, so since logarithms are exponents, the laws of exponents give rise to the logs of logarithms. Okay, so these are important for expanding and combining logs that we'll see in the in, in, as we end this section. <clears throat> so log base a of a times b okay, can be written, expanded as log base a of log base a of a plus log base a of b. So when you have multiplication, you can split it up as two separate logs as the sum. Now log base a of a divided by b, well, this is log base a of a minus log base a of b. So division gets split up as subtraction. 
and log base a of a raised to the c, well, you can take an exponent and bring it down in front, so you get c log base a of a. All right, these are three important laws. All right, so let's talk now about expanding and combining logs using these, these laws. Okay, so let's use the law of logarithms to expand each expression here. All right, we got all these all these logs. So log base 2 of 6x. Well, notice I have 6 times x. Okay, so I'm going to write this as log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x. Log base 2 of 6 plus log base 2 of x, sorry. So that, that was just multiplication. Break it up. This one's a little bit harder. I have log base 5 of x cubed y to the 6th. First, it's x cubed times y to the 6th, so break it up as log base 5x cubed plus log base 5y to the 6th. Now use our third law to bring these exponents down in front. So this becomes 3 log base 5 of x plus bring this 6 down in front, 6 log base 5 of y. All right, this one's a little crazy. Okay, This is the natural log of a times b divided by the third root of c. So first, break up the division and subtraction. It's the natural log of AB minus the natural log of the third root of C. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take this product, okay, and break it up as addition. So this becomes natural log of A plus natural log of B. I'm then going to write the third root as an exponent of one-third. Ah, now I can use the third law to bring that one-third down in front here, okay? And this is, a, this is the log fully expanded. All right, the law of logarithms also allow us to reverse the process of expanding that was done in example two. That is, we can write sum and differences of logs as a single logs. This process called combining logarithmic expressions is going to be illustrated next. Okay, so let's use the law of logarithms to combine each expression into a single log. So this is expanded. We want to whoop, bring it back. All right, so we'll start with this one. 3 log x plus 1 half log x plus 1. All right, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to undo the laws. You're going to follow the laws backwards. So you're going to undo law 3. So you're going to take these numbers in front of the logs and bring them up as, as exponents. Now I have this addition. So I'm going to combine those then, combine it as, as multiplication. So this becomes log of x cubed times x plus 1 to the 1 half power. And now it's a single log. All right, let's try this crazy one here. Okay, so 3 natural log of s plus 1 half natural log of t minus 4 times the natural log of t squared plus 1. First, bring up all these coefficients in front now as exponents. Okay, that's the first thing. Now what you're going to do, you're going to work left to right. So take this multiplication or this addition and combine them as multiplication. So it's going to be the natural log of s cubed t to the 1 half. Now I see subtraction. That tells me I can undo it as division. And this gets me the final answer right here. All right, I hope that helped as a quick introduction to exponentials and logs.